guys, it's Jessie from Plaid, and welcome to Let's Paint Live, our monthly paint night where we teach you to paint a full painting in just about an hour. Tonight we're going to be painting our fall bouquet, and I'm going to let you know what supplies you'll need to get started. The first thing I have here, as you can see, is my, this I have a 10 by 10 wood uh, canvas. You can use any square canvas is fine if you have a 12 by 12 or just a regular stretched canvas. Um, any canvas will work for this, especially if it's a square. So I have my 10 by 10 wood canvas here. I've got my 10-piece um, folk art variety brush set. So I've got four brushes from that pack tonight. I've got my 3 fourths flat brush, my number 10 flat brush, my number 6 round brush, and my number 12 flat brush. And like I said, those are all from the 10-piece folk art variety set, um, and those are the ones I'll be using tonight. Um, they don't have to be these exact brushes. If you've got just a couple small flat brushes, and a small round and a medium sized flat brush, um, you should be good to go. I've also got my palette paper here, which is just a wax coated paper for mixing paint. I have my paper towels and my water basin for cleaning my brushes. I also have a hair dryer tonight, which we're gonna use to dry our painting halfway through or really towards the beginning. Um, so if you don't have a hair dryer and you're gonna paint this later, feel free to just pause the video while you're painting air dries and then you can continue when it's dry. But I do have that. And then as always, we're going to be using our Folk Art acrylic paints. And the colors I have tonight are Wicker White, Berry Wine, Cardinal Red, Bright Pink, Daffodil Yellow, Thicket, and last but not least, we have Navy Blue. So again, um, feel free to substitute any of these colors. If you've got something similar at home, or if you can, I'll try to let you guys know as we go, if you can mix colors to get something similar to these colors. So um, whatever you've got at home will totally work for this painting. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll get started. So the first thing we're gonna do for our painting is we're gonna base coat the entire canvas in bright pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some bright pink onto my palette, oops. I'm gonna put about a quarter size amount to start with because we'll need a good bit to base coat. And to base coat it, I'm going to grab my, my 3 4 inch flat brush. And some of you may be wondering, why are we painting our um, canvas with bright pink when obviously our, our canvas is going to be this pretty navy blue and this um, maroon color at the bottom? It's because we are going to um, have a pink undertone to our painting. So we have all these beautiful fall uh, colors, and then the bright pink is a really fun pop that's really shining through, um, and it's really contrasted to the deep fall color. So it's just a really fun way to paint. Um, we've done it before. We painted an orange base coat beneath it, and we painted it on top, and it's just really fun to have those bright colors pop through the painting. So that's why we're doing this tonight. So go ahead, and we're going to paint just a nice, thin, even coat of our bright pink all over our canvas. And you can paint the sides as well. And whenever I'm base coating a canvas, I always like to make sure I have nice, smooth, even strokes. And I try to put, use as um, little paint as possible. You always want to use the least paint that you can um, to successfully cover your canvas. If you use more paint than you need, it just starts to get goopy, and that's when you might start to see brush strokes, and it doesn't dry quite as well. Um, so I always like to use a nice, thin coat when I'm painting. I like to get nice, even strokes, just enough so that I have full coverage. Just make sure I get it all. And that's something I love about these um, wooden palette, or I'm sorry, wooden canvases, is that they're unfinished. This is one of our surfaces, a plaid surface, and it comes with no finish on it. So the wood absorbs the paint really beautifully. So when you're painting on a stretch canvas, um, it's good as well. It has other advantages, but usually stretch canvases come from the store already primed. They have gesso on them. And so the paint sits on top and doesn't get soaked up, which like I said, has other advantages. Sometimes you don't want the canvas to soak up your paint. But I just really love how these wood canvases um, soak up the paint and they, they also dry really quickly for when we're doing these quick one hour paintings. This is one of my favorite things to paint on. Again, you can see I'm trying to do nice, long, even strokes to get my canvas covered nice and evenly. And we are using bright pink and folk art acrylic paints. 
and we have our 3 fourths inch flat brush. A one inch brush will be fine, even a half inch brush should do the trick. Whatever you have available to you will be perfectly fine for base coating this canvas. Looks like I'm going to need to get a little more paint. I had almost enough. All right, so you can see I have a nice even coat. I do have a little bit of a wood grain um, showing through. So if I was really concerned about um, having a really, um, a really even coat and make sure that it was really completely covered, I would probably dry this and do a second coat. But since we're gonna be painting on top of it, we just really want that color showing through. So if it's a little bit inconsistent and you can see the wood texture coming through, that's okay for this. We're just gonna do one coat. My brush is nice and clean. And then like I said, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna dry this with my hair dryer real quick. So if you're watching this video later, feel free to pause and let your canvas dry or go ahead and hit it with a hair dryer while I'm doing that as well. And in case you're wondering, um, I'm using it on the highest setting and I usually switch. I have this sort of cool button on my uh, hair dryer. I switch between warm and cool. So I, I use warm for a while and then if I feel like my canvas is getting a little bit hot, I'll switch to cool um, and cool it down and I'll go back and forth until it's dry. nice and dry. So we can go ahead and we can continue with our painting. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do sort of um, what I like to call a sketch um, with our paintbrush. So if you've got a pencil at home you can feel free to use that for sketching if that's what you feel more comfortable using. But um, if you've joined us for our Let's Paint Live or any of our painting classes before with me you'll know that I usually just sketch it with um, a paintbrush. So I'm going to grab some of my wicker white which again any white acrylic paint will do. And I'm just gonna put a little bit, I have about a dime sized amount on there. I don't have very much at all. So I'm gonna grab my number six round brush. So really just any um, small to medium sized round brush will work for this. And um, I'm gonna water down my paint a little bit. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna do sort of um, a pen and ink sort of uh, technique right now. We're gonna make our paint very inky in consistency. So you want it to be pretty thin. So we can do some loose drawing on top of our paint. And the reason we want it to be so thin is that A, it'll flow much better on our brush. Um, it'll be much easier to use it like it was a pen or a pencil. And B, if we uh, make any errors while we're doing our drawing, it's gonna be really easy to, um, to clean up or to correct because it's so thin. If we had just full on um, acrylic paint, just full bodied on our brush and we were painting with it, chances are it would be pretty textured where those lines were and when we paint it over it, you would still see that texture. So we want it to stay nice and flat. And that's why we're thinning it down a little. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start um, drawing the shapes and our painting. So if some of you at home um, are a little intimidated by drawing, which I think is a lot of people, don't stress because I'm gonna break down every single shape for you so that it's really easy for you to draw along with me. If you don't have to worry, if you can't draw a vase, if you can't draw a flower, it turns out you can, and I'm about to show you how. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a circle right on the bottom half of our canvas. So I'm gonna mark about maybe an inch from the bottom. That's where I want the bottom of it to be. And I'm gonna draw a circle, just a plain old circle, and it doesn't need to be perfect right there. You can see my circle certainly isn't perfect. I tried to get it as even as I can, but 
you can see in our final painting, it's, it's not really perfect anyway. And then about a half an inch above that, I'm gonna draw a horizontal oval. Again, not perfect. And I'm gonna connect those two using a curved line. All I did was connect them. So I did my large circle right here, a curved oval above it, and then I just simply connected them. And you can see we've already drawn our base shape. It's as easy as that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start drawing our flowers. So we're gonna draw two large circles right here, side by side. So I'll do one here. And then one right next to it. Again, you can see they're not perfect. So I have my two circles, and then I'm gonna draw an oval, another horizontal oval right above that, and it's gonna be touching those two. So as you can see, those are the three flowers in our floral bouquet. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we're gonna draw this table that it's sitting on. So all that is is just a line behind our vase here. It can even go through the vase if that's easier for you to get your line to be nice and even to go through the vase, that's fine because we're going to paint over all of this anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. So a nice line, and again, that, that's maybe an inch and a half from the bottom. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add in some of these, some lines for where we want our um, leaves to go, our leaves and our stems. So we have some stems coming down from these right here. So just really loose lines. I just did four there. And then the lines would of course be going into our vase as well. We'll just do a few because we'll count some of the, the greenery as stems as well. We're not gonna be too particular for this painting. And then we'll have some leaves coming out from here. And we're not gonna paint the leaves just yet. We're just gonna paint sort of where we want these stems to go. So we know where they are in our mind. We'll paint a leaf coming out there, and a flower coming out there, and we'll have a couple here as well. And you can make yours just like mine, or you can choose where you want your leaves to go, your leaves and your greenery to go. It's totally up to you. We'll have another one, a couple flowers coming down there. And then we've got some more leaves here. And I think I like that. I think that's good. Got my stems there. And so that's it. That's it for drawing our, um, for drawing out our composition. So hopefully that was pretty simple for you guys at home. Hopefully you didn't struggle with that. Um, I think it's always much easier to draw shapes when you break them down into simple shapes like this. So just like that, like I said, our composition is finished. So now um, is the fun part. We're going to start adding some color. So the first thing we're going to start painting um, are our leaves. So we kind of want our flowers to be on top of our leaves. We're going to think about this painting in layers. So we want the flowers to be um, above the leaves. So we're going to paint the leaves first and then the flowers on top of those. So there's a little bit of layering going on. So I'm going to grab Thicket. And Thicket um, is just a really beautiful dark green color. So if you don't have this color at home um, and you have some sort of just regular sort of medium green color or like a true green color, you can mix that with navy blue and that should get you um, something similar to Thicket. I'm also going to put some of our daffodil yellow onto my palette. And again, this is just a medium yellow color, so anything you have at home is fine. So I'm going to grab my number six round brush again, which is the same brush we're using for our, for our sort of uh, paint sketching. And I'm just going to wet it so it's nice and soft. And I'm going to pick up some thicket on my brush. And I'm going to start painting in my um, stems. So we're just going to get started. We're just, I'm just going to cover up where those white lines are, where we put the stems in our drawing. I'm just going to follow those lines. And you can see we're, this is a sort of a loose painting. So we're not super worried about making the shapes perfect. I had too much water, so I'm going to get some out. We're not worried about making the shapes perfect. We just are sort of suggesting that there's some stems in this face. It's not gonna be, you know, photo accurate or anything like that. We just wanna give the impression that there's stems in this face. Just following the lines that we drew in our first step. And then while this is wet, you can see I, I did that really quickly and I did it quickly on purpose because I don't want you guys to spend too much time on these parts. This is supposed to be a very loose painting. We want to be 
pretty quick and not a lot of thought put into these brush strokes and that's what makes it look, that's what gives it um, that really loose look when it's finished. So now while these are still wet, you can see I still have my number six round brush. I haven't uh, washed it at all. I wiped off the excess just a little bit. I'm gonna pick up some daffodil yellow, just a little, and I'm gonna go over those again. And I'm gonna add some yellow to it. And what that does, um, of course you guys know, if you mix dark green and yellow at home, you're gonna get sort of a light green color. So this just gives us sort of a variation in the green colors of our stems. It makes it look a little less flat, like it's not just one green tone. It gives it a little, almost uh, dimension. And if you wanna go back and add a little bit more of a thicket, if you feel like you got maybe too much yellow, feel free to do that. You wanna darken them back up a little. So you can see that gives it just a little bit um, more interest. It gives it a little bit of detail on those stems. They're not just so flat looking. So, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my number six round brush. Still haven't cleaned it off. Still have it in my hand. And we're gonna start painting some of these leaves and some of these stems that go out around our flowers. <clears throat> so for this leaf right here, I'm gonna show you how to paint this nice, beautiful, long leaf, this long, thin leaf. We're gonna play with pressure on our brush. So we're gonna start at the base and do really light pressure, and then we're gonna press down into a heavy pressure and then pull back up. So here, I'll show you what I mean. It's gonna be light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Now I ran out of paint a little, my, my brush dried out, so I'm gonna go back and do it over. So light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. And we have this nice leaf shape and you can fill it in a little if your, my brush dried out. And then again, we're gonna add some daffodil yellow, just like we did for our stems. Just a little bit of yellow to give it a little bit of detail. You can see how, how super simple that was. It wasn't anything fancy. All we did was we made that stem and the leaf with one brush stroke. So we're gonna continue that for some of our other leaves. So we'll do the same thing over here. We're gonna do light pressure, heavy pressure, and then light pressure. Like I said, you can fill it in. It gives you a good idea of where the shape is. And then we'll add some daffodil yellow. And we'll do another one here. Light, heavy, light. He's a little bit shorter. And then we'll add some daffodil yellow. And then we'll do a little guy here, a little leaf. And we'll add some daffodil yellow. All right. So now we're gonna do um, a couple of little stems going right here to connect where the, we have these sort of filler flowers. So a stem there. If you feel like your brush is dragging a little bit on the canvas, I'm in, a, I'm in a really dry place right now, so my paint wants to dry quickly, especially on this wood canvas. You can just dip your brush just a tiniest bit in water, and that'll help your paint um, flow just a little bit better. You don't want to put a ton of water on it, just enough so your brush is um, wet and the paint flows. So we're just going to cover up those. We'll do another stem right here like that one. We're going to add some yellow, just like we've been doing. And again, you wanna keep it so loose. You can see I'm sort of holding my brush at the end. I'm not holding it right up here. I'm not holding it like a pencil because that makes your hand wanna shake. It, it, you're too concentrated on it and you have a, almost too much control over it. And when you're that close, any little movement that your hand makes is gonna, gonna go down to where you're painting. If you hold it up here, even if you kind of move around a lot, it's hard to, um, the movement doesn't go to the brush as quickly. And so you're able to can actually have a more fluid motion that way. Add a little yellow. And then we're gonna put a couple little pieces up here, a couple little pieces of greenery. And we'll do another leaf up here. Some yellow in that one as well. We'll do a little extra guy. All right, so that is it right now for our greenery. So go ahead and clean my brush off. So now I'm gonna clean my brush off and I'm gonna pick up my 
number 10 flat brush, which is just a small flat brush. It's probably about a quarter of an inch wide. I'm gonna grab that brush and I'm also gonna grab some of my berry wine, which is a really beautiful burgundy color. And we are going to um, fill in this circle right here, the left flower that we painted. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna fill that in with color. So a nice, even coat of color. And while we still have the berry wine um, in our brush, we still have our number 10 flat in the berry wine. We haven't cleaned it off yet. We're gonna pick up just a little bit of wicker white. So hopefully you can see how little I'm talking. There's just the tiniest bit of wicker white. We're gonna start painting some um, sort of C shapes around our flower to create some texture. So there's a C there. Here, I'll show you on my palette. It's gonna be shapes like this that shape. We're gonna create those, we're gonna go all the way around our circle to create some texture and dimension in our flower. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect, we're just adding some really loose texture to sort of imply that this flower has lots of petals. So feel free to pick up some more berry wine if you need it. And you can add in the white as you go. And I'm sort of going over the edge of that circle so that um, the edge has more of these petal shapes and isn't so isn't so perfect of a circle. I want it to look more like it has these petals around the edge. You see, I'm kind of just going right over that shape. I'm adding white in as I go, and then I'm gonna do another layer just inside those, right inside those petals that I just did around the edge. I'm gonna just fill in that middle too. A lot of white, so we'll do, go back over with some berry wine. So you have something like that. You can see it just sort of suggests that there's lots of petals layered on that flower. So you can go ahead and you can clean your brush off. And now we are going to grab some of our cardinal red, which is just a really pretty red color. So any medium red you've got at home is fine for this. And we're going to do the same thing for our right flower. We're just going to use cardinal red and we're gonna fill this flower in. I'm gonna make sure you go right up to that line. You do wanna cover up the white line. So again, just a nice even coat of cardinal red in there, making sure to cover the line as best you can. And now we're gonna do the same technique that we just did in this flower, but we are going to add a little bit of our daffodil yellow to create our petals. So picking up a little daffodil yellow, we're gonna make, this is gonna make sort of orangey petals, which will be pretty, really pretty for fall. Kinda reminds me of like a ranunculus flower, or something like that. We're just making our petal shapes all the way around, just like we did for the first flower, and we're adding a little bit of yellow as we go. Oops, that was a lot of yellow. It's okay, though. I like how it's all a little bit different. It's definitely got variety in color. And then we're going to do a row right beneath those inside the flower. There, so you can see our flowers are pretty similar now. So 
So last but not least, we're gonna paint that flower that's on top. And you can see in our final painting, this one's sort of sitting above those a little bit, it's sort of layered, and that's what we're doing at last. So we're just going to sort of paint right over the edge of those flowers, just so it looks like this flower is in front of those. So first, we're gonna fill it in with some wicker white. We're still using our number 10 flat brush, we haven't changed brushes. We're just gonna fill in this oval shape with wicker white. You can see I'm going right over, like I said, the flowers we just painted, they're overlapping a little bit. And if I get a little bit of those colors in my white, because they're still wet, that's okay. Just fill it in with a nice, even coat of wicker white. And now we're going to do the same thing that we did with our little petals that we've been painting using these C shapes. Um, but we're going to go, they're going to be a little distorted because of course this flower, these flowers are kind of looking straight on and then this one's sitting up a little bit. So we're seeing it from an angle. So they're going to be a little bit wider and on the sides they're going to be a little narrower. And here I'll show you what I mean. Um, to paint this one we're going to use just the tiniest bit of berry wine. So here I'll show you, we do a petal there. Petals all around the bottom. And then a wide one on the side, and petals up here, another wide one on the side. You can see it's just gonna, they're just gonna be narrower, not quite as many. You can feel free to add more white in if you feel like it's getting a little bit too red, which I feel like mine is getting a little too red. I want it to be a mostly white flower, so I'm gonna go back and add a little more white. And don't forget to do your petals in the middle as well. Sort of look like it, it's pretty tight in there. It's not, you don't have quite, a, have quite as much room as the other ones to paint that second row in the center. But just try to make some of these little squirrely shapes just to imply that there's lots of petals in here. You can see we couldn't really do two full rows, but just make some more C shapes in the center so that it looks like it's really nice and full. I'm just adding a little more white. Okay. So now we are going to switch back to our number six round brush. And we're gonna paint in some of these little filler flowers that we talked about in the beginning. These are just cute little flowers that sort of fill our bouquet. So we're gonna start with berry wine. So again, I've got my number six round brush and I've got berry wine. And we're gonna start by painting dots. So we're gonna sort of smush our brush. So smush, smush, smush. And we're gonna do it in three rows to start right at the base. And we're gonna taper it smaller and smaller. So we'll do three rows, three rows. All I'm doing is smushing my brush and then we'll do two rows and then we'll leave it with one row. So we have sort of this nice cone shape. Do the same thing here. One, two, three. We're sort of overlapping that stem a little. One, two, three. One, two. And then we'll finish it off with just one. All we're doing is just smushing our brush. We'll do another one right here. One, two, three. This one's sort of going to the left, of course. One, two, three. One, two, and then finish it off with one. And you can see, now we have these nice little um, tapered cone flowers. And now to give those a little more dimension, we're gonna put just the tiniest bit of white in there too. We're just gonna sort of smush it in to create some texture. So we'll put a tiniest bit of white on our brush and then just sort of smush it in to those petals just to give it a little bit of detail so they're not so flat looking when they dry. They've got more than one color there. So our next step for our painting is to paint um, our vase. So we're going to paint that next. Um, and to do that, we're going to grab some of our navy blue. And we're also going to be using um, wicker white. So if you don't have any more wicker white on your palette, go ahead and put some of that on there now. I've still got some though, so I'm gonna use that to start anyway. So to paint our vase, we are going to mix these two colors just a little bit. We don't want it to be a perfect mixture, because as you can see here, oops, I just dipped my brush in yellow. 
As you can see here, there's lots of variation in the blue colors in that base. It's really uneven, and again, we have that really loose painterly look that we're going for for this painting. So we don't want to see a perfect solid blue. We want to be able to see all those brush strokes and where the colors are combined between the navy and the white. So we're not going to mix our paint completely. We're just going to um, start off with some navy blue and then a tiny bit of wicker white. And we're just going to mix them a tiny bit. As you can see there, I didn't mix it fully. We just mix it sort of halfway. Maybe even grab some more white. I want it to be a little lighter. Again, we're not going to mix it all the way. Make sure you stop yourself from mixing it completely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my vase. I'm just going to follow the line that is the outer edge that we painted, the white line. And again, I'm using my number six round. And then we also want to paint on um, the mouth of our vase. But of course, we painted the full oval here. And of course, you wouldn't see the top part of the oval because if this was a real vase, that would be the back side and that would be hidden by our stems. So we're just going to paint the front part right over our stems, the front part that's going to be the mouth of that vase. So just like that, right over our stems, we're going to paint the mouth of that. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go through and we are going to paint inside the vase. But one thing we want to keep in mind is that we want to keep some of that pink showing. So around each of the stems, we want to make sure that we leave just a little uh, hint of pink. It's like a little tiny secret. It's like a little bit of a, just a pop of pink that's just a fine line between each of the shapes. So we don't want a ton of pink showing because we don't want it to be a totally pink painting because this is for fall. We just want that really fun sort of pop coming through. So here, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to paint really, again, really loosely. And you can pick up some navy as you go and some white as you go to get it to be really random. And I'm going to paint carefully, but not too carefully, between these stems. And you can see I'm leaving just a tiny bit of pink there. And I'm doing it really loosely. But I am leaving that pink showing. I don't want to cover all that up. That's the whole point of painting it. I'm going to, I'm going to put... Um, more navy on the left side, a little bit of darkness there, and then I'm going to have light on this side because we're going to act like maybe this side of our vase is in shadow just to give it a little more dimension. So this side's going to be heavy in navy and this side's going to be heavier in white. But both sides are going to have both colors. So again, I'm just painting that on there. We're going around the stems. And we're not mixing the two colors fully. We want to see the brush strokes and the the paint strokes in there. We like the way that looks. I'm then going between my stems, leaving, making sure to leave some pink. And start increasing my use of the white as we go to the right side so it starts to get lighter. We're just, like I said, we're really not being very careful with how we paint around them. And that's sort of one way to get that really fun, loose, sort of almost impressionistic look. It's just sort of being, I don't want to say careless, but just really loose with your brush strokes. That's sort of how you get that nice, loose look. It's going to be kind of hard for some of you perfectionists out there. I struggle with that too. I'm, I'm not always great at doing these loose paintings because I really like everything to be perfect, but this is just a different style and it's really fun to switch over sometimes. So add a little more white to this side. And that's all. We're just going to leave our vase like that. We don't want to overdo it. Maybe a little bit more white in there. Now I'm just going to let it be. I'm going to leave it imperfect because that's the way I want my painting to look. And I'm going to clean my brush off. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, hang on to my number six round brush. It's the same brush we were using. 
and I'm gonna pick up some navy blue and we're gonna dab some navy blue in the centers of these flowers um, just to give them, like I said, a little more detail to make them look like they have these dark centers. So again, I'm just gonna sort of dab really loosely. I'm just putting some pressure on my brush and I'm just dabbing it into sort of a round area right in the center. There's not, you can see there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason. I'm gonna try to keep it fairly round. I'm just gonna dab it in the center for sort of a dramatic deep color to sort of break up those warm tones. And then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do it for the big ones and then I'm gonna use a different color for my small flower. I'm gonna use berry wine and do the same thing for this guy. And this one's gonna be a little bit longer, of course, because this flower, again, is a different angle that we're looking at it. So the perspective will be a little different and this one's gonna look like it's an oval as opposed to a circle, just like the flower itself. Okay, so we're coming up on our last steps of the painting. Uh, right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab our three fourths inch flat brush and we're gonna start base coating um, our background with navy blue. So to get sort of this brush strokey, really loose um, looking texture in the background, we're gonna add a little bit of wicker white as we go. So we're gonna start with mostly navy and just sort of start filling that in. And we're just gonna add the tiniest little corner of wicker white here and there just to give it some variation. We don't want it to be solid blue looking. We want it to be, have a little bit of variety. And again, it's important since we're gonna start painting around these shapes again, just like in the vase, you wanna go right up to the shapes, but you don't wanna paint all the way up to the vase. We wanna leave that little bit of pink showing just for that really fun pop. So you can see here, I'm gonna go right up to the vase, but I am gonna leave a little bit of pink showing. I'm gonna go right to the bottom. We're gonna meet where our table or whatever this vase happens to be sitting on is. And I'm just gonna use this large brush for some of the bigger areas and then I'll go back with um, a smaller flat brush to get into some of those details. I'm just gonna get some coverage with this brush now. And again, if you feel like your brush is really dragging a lot, if your paint's drying very quickly, then feel free to just dip your brush in a little bit of water just to help it flow better on your canvas. You can see I'm going really far around because I, I'm gonna go back with a small brush, don't forget, and get into those more detailed areas so I don't, so I have better control. Do the same thing on this side, and I'm gonna grab some more wicker white because I'm running out. Again, we're gonna leave some pink showing. I'm just adding a tiny dab of white here and there. You can see I'm going in every which direction. I should have mentioned that in the beginning. Normally when we're base coating something, we wanna go in all one direction and keep it nice and smooth. But for this one, we wanna see all that texture and we wanna see all those brush strokes. So I'm going in every direction that I can. I'm going in all kinds of different directions to create that texture. So it's, again, it's a little different than the way we would normally paint, but that's kind of what makes it so fun. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush for some of these more detailed areas. I'm gonna clean off my big flat brush. And I'm gonna to switch to, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my number 12 flat brush, which I believe this is a half inch flat. So if you've got that at home, it's the same thing. We're gonna get into some of these details. So again, I'm just gonna go right up to the edge of all these shapes, but I'm not gonna meet it. I'm just gonna go really close to it so we can see that pink background coming through.
Again, you want, don't want to forget that we're trying to keep these really random brush strokes. And you can use your, put your brush sideways to get into some of these details. Use all the angles of your brush to your advantage. And we're going to get right up there. And we're just going around all of these shapes, making sure to remember to add in a little bit of white as we go, just to give it some variation. And you want to get into these little details too, make sure there's a little blue showing in there. You can even go in between these stems here and make sure you've just got some blue in there. Cover up just a little bit of the pink while still letting some pink show through. Just going right up to these flower edges, making sure I get between all my greenery as well. And I still want to show, again, like a broken record this time, you want to make sure you're leaving some of that bright pink showing through. I'm going to grab a little more navy blue. And again, I'm still using my number 12 flat brush, which is pretty much a half inch flat. Again, I'm using this side of my brush to get into some of those smaller areas. Sometimes it's easier if you tilt your painting a little bit as you're painting, because once it starts to get wet, it's hard, kind of hard to see where your colors are or if there's any spaces that you missed. So I like to tilt my painting up if I'm painting on a flat surface to see that I've got everything I would like to get and that it all looks the way that I want it to. 
All right, that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna clean my brush off. So our last step is to paint the bottom. So to do that, we're gonna paint it mostly in berry wine. I still have my number 12 flat. I'm gonna paint berry wine across the bottom. Keeping in mind the same thing we've been doing for the rest of the painting, we wanna go right up to the line, leaving some of the background showing. Nice and loose. You can see that I'm not even really giving it full coverage like I would normally do because I like the way the paint is sort of coming through the paint. You can see the brush strokes. I really like the way that looks. That's why I'm not painting it perfectly. I'm not making sure that I've got full coverage like I, I normally would when I'm painting. I'm making it really loose. So when you're finished with your painting, don't forget to sign it. And that is it for our fall bouquet. Um, so make sure you, sh you join our Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid, and share your painting in there so we can see it. We've got tons of members in that group who love to share their artwork, whether they're beginners or they've been painting for many years. Um, and I'd love to see what you're painting too. I'm a part of that Facebook group, so please share along with us. Um, and keep an eye out for next month's event listing so you can see what our pa painting will be for next month's Let's Paint Live. And we hope to see you then. Thanks, bye.